Good morning, Johnny Rab 3 Gamers. I appreciate all the views of my Johnny Rab 3 instructions of how to play tutorials on YouTube. I've been asked to go through a whole turn sequence, so I've set up this brigade and brigade battle um, to show you how to full turn plays. Uh, again, as a reminder, on these beautiful charts, the turn sequences, the mark orders, routes, rallies, replacements, reveal orders, resolve first fires, move disengaging units, resolve charges, perform normal movement, resolve moving fires, and resolve officer casualties. If you see the little round disc on there, I'm using these beautifully constructed Johnny Reb markers made by Rob Prince in Historics. Star Q, I should say, uh, instead of the chits. So, as you've seen, I've marked the orders for all the troops. So, the next thing is to do is if there's any routes, rallies, or placements. I'm not having any for this turn. So, we're going to reveal orders. So, I'm going to turn over the markers. This unit is going to first fire. This unit is going to charge in support of this frontal unit, which is charging. This unit is moving through the woods. On the American side, this unit is going to first fire. Um, the cannon is going to first fire. The infantry is going to hold, and this uh, unit in the woods is also going to move toward the Confederates in the woods also. Now I have four stands as a regiment. In this particular scenario with 10 millimeters, I have five man per stand. So they're sort of large units, 20 man regiments. But that will give us some better results for on the hit chart and stuff. So now that we've revealed orders, the very first things that happens, if you look on the chart again, is we're going to resolve first fires. And how we do that is simply by using this chart. In the cross references, you count the number of guys here on the left, the figures firing, and then you roll 2d6 or 3 depending on the range, and then you go through these modifiers DRMs, die roll modifiers. So let's start off the game doing this. Now remember it's simultaneous. So, first of all, we're going to measure, and what I do is I measure from the center to the closest. So, both those units are going to be around three inches apart, which of course is normal range. As two inches is close range. And the ranges are here on the right side of the chart, as you can see here, rifle muskets two, four, and 12. So since it's three inches, both are gonna get the normal roll, which in this case is three dice. So let's go through the modifiers before I roll. Um, there is no officer present for either. Yeah, we're not going to do opening volley. We are marked first fire, so that's a plus one on the die roll. Um, firing works. It is behind the stone wall, but it's not work, so we're not counting that. Target. It's behind a stone wall, so it's a minus two for both units, actually. So we're going to have a plus one for mark first fire, and then a minus two for behind the stone wall. So we're going to have a negative one on both units firing, and we're going to roll three dice. So looking on this, we're on the 20 column, right here. I'm going to roll three dice, minus one for the total die roll to get the results. So we rolled a 14, minus 1 is 13. So again, if I look at the chart in column 20 here, on a 13, and again, I have large units, so this is going to be brutal. So I have four hits. Four hits. That was union firing on the Confederates. 
For the sake of ease, I'm just going to mark, put a dice right there to show them that they have four casualties. And now the Confederates are going to fire. Since it's simultaneous, uh, when the Confederates fire, you do not subtract the four hits that they just got. So it's the same thing. It's going to be a minus one on the die roll. The Americans are firing 20 and minus one. And they rolled a 13 also. Wow, what a coincidence. So looking on the chart again, they have 20 men, 13. So the Union gets four hits. Now what I am going to do for the fun of this game is we're going to say that both units are veteran units, so their morale is a three. And uh, so when we're going to do a morale test, you roll two dice and you have to roll above a three in order for them to pass. Now, if you look on the lower right corner here, here's how to check morale. Um, any modifiers we're going to do, um, the only modifier really is a minus one for behind cover. So instead of their morale being a three, their morale is a two, so I just can't roll snake eyes. So six, so they would pass their morale test with four figures for the first casualty. Let's check the Confederates. They just don't want to roll snake eyes. They roll a seven. They're fine. Now, just for fun, let's say that each unit had lost a stand based on the fire. So let's uh, do the morale with that. So the normal morale is a three. Losing a stand is a three more, which is a six, but they're behind cover, which is one, so they have to beat a five. So the union here would have to beat a five, and they pass. Doing the same with the Confederates. The normal morale is three. Stand is a three behind covers, minus one, so that would be five. And they both pass. So they would continue into the next round. So I'll keep that like that for this turn. Now, after first fires are done, Going back to sequence of events on the chart, you have moved disengaging units. Well, there is none there. So what's next is resolving charges. So what we do for resolving charges is that we're going to roll. They're going uphill, so that's going to be rough terrain or broken terrain, sorry. So they're going to get to do their more normal move in line of broken terrain is four inches. So what I usually do in my game to keep track is I move, and I am declaring that this unit is going to support the front unit for the charge. So what I usually do is just take one of the stands and move it four inches. So I'm up to the wall. And then I'm going to roll two extra dice to see how far the charge actually goes. So it goes seven more inches. And this is important because... Halfway through the charge of seven inches, this is how far the charge is going to go all the way. Halfway through at three and a half, they become disorder. The reason why that's important is because when they make impact with that unit there, um, whether, whether they're in disorder or good order, makes a big difference. I believe it's a plus three um, for impact if you're in disorder. And that is from the chart right here. And yes, it is. I'm sorry, it's, it's a plus four for impact. So you don't want that because lower rolls win on two dice thrown in the charge sequence. So what we're going to do at this point is see when this unit gets um, defensive fire. But I got to back up one turn here for a second because I forgot that the artillery is doing a first fire also. And I wanted to show you that. So the artillery is four inches away. And it is a three-inch rifle. So you can see here on the chart that it's normal range because it's under 16. But it's not canister range of two. So that cannon is going to get three dice to fire at the unit in front that was charging. And I'm just backing up. Sorry about that. So I'm going to roll three dice. And I have a 12. Now if you look on the right side, 
of the chart. This shows the sections. Okay, this particular gun I'm saying has two sections. So cross indexing, uh, you have two sections. And I rolled a 12. So right here, there's a casualty of one on this Confederate unit. Now again, I'm going to pretend that they, it's their first casualty, so we're going to do two checks actually. First casualty, and then also artillery fire. So the first casualty you're going to roll, we're going to need to beat a, above a two. And they rolled a four, they're fine. Now you count the artillery hit on the um, checking for morale. And this is the chart here where you check for morale. First loss hit by artillery. So you add one for that artillery hit. So I'm normally a three plus one is a four, but minus one for cover. I'm sorry, there's no cover here. Take that back. Okay, so they're firing there. So it's normally a three. An artillery hit makes it a four, so they have to roll above a four to charge. And they pass. So they have one casualty. So I'm putting them up there. Um, well, it's sort of sliding right now, but now what we do is the union is going to roll 1d6 and cut it in half. In order to determine the defensive fire, where the defensive fire has. So a 6 is 3 inches away, which is where the defensive fire would happen. The good news for the Confederates is 3 inches away is not close range of 2. So the Union Infantry is going to fire three dice. There are no modifiers here since the Confederates are in the open. So again, we're going to have 20 guys here shooting. And we're rolling three dice because it's normal range. And we rolled an 11. So 11 on 20 is 3. So the Confederates are going to take three hits. I believe they already had another hit from artillery, if I was not mistaken. So that makes a total of four hits, but it does not take a stand. So the charge will go in. And then, like I said, we are using the second unit for support. And you'll see why this matters in a minute. Well, thank goodness the Confederates did not have a loss of uh, any figures. So here's what we do for figuring out the impact. If you look here, the bottom of the back page, it tells us how to do the infantry charge procedure. Um, so what I'm going to do with the old Dean West method, method of counting up the modifiers, again, you use the morale chart here for impact modifiers. And so I'm going to do it the old Dean West way with counting where both are at. So first of all, this unit, their morale is a three, so you start off with a three. You're behind cover, so it's minus one and it's a two. And they have a general nearby, so they are at a 1. Now for the Confederates, when you look at this chart here, you start off with a 3. They go down to a 2 for charging, and they have 1 support. So that makes them a 1 also. So now both units are going to roll 2 dice, and they're both going to add 1. And whoever has the lower number wins the impact. Now impact is not the same as melee. If we roll the same here, then we'll go into melee. But for the sake of this game, first of all, the union is going to roll two dice, and they roll really low, a four, plus the ones a five. And now the confederates are going to roll, and they have a six plus one is a seven. So in this case, the confederates lost. So looking at this chart, dice down for impact. If the defender wins, attacker falls back in disorder. One die from the defender. And both sides 
fire simultaneous two dice value. Now there's been some debate about that because we have another chart that PJ O'Neill made which just resolves the difference for the results, which is a good chart. Um, so anyways, in this particular case, the Confederates would go back 1d6. So they'd go back 4 inches. And the supporting unit would roll also to see how far it goes back 1d6. Sorry about that. Seems that my game thing keeps the tip over. So they'd go back 5 inches. So in this combat, the charge failed. Front unit would go back four inches back to the wall, right before the wall, and this back unit would go back five inches on the other side of the wall, and the charge sequence would be done. So just for fun, we're going to re-roll this again and see if we have better results or different results. So the union we're going to roll again. Wow, they rolled a 12. So that's 13, and the Confederates rolled a 9, 1, 10. So they won. So in this case, the Confederates won. So let's go to the chart here. If the attacker wins, the defender falls back in disorder. 2d6 for the attacker. And I'll show you here on the chart that it also reveals when you roll two dice to how far the defender goes back, it will give you what morale it is. So in this second round, just for fun, I'm going to roll two dice. If you see here, it's a 7. So the unit... The union in this case would run back seven inches and they'd be shaken. Now the important part about that is remembering how far the Confederate thing went. Now they went back seven inches. So the good news is they'd be just outside how far the Confederates made it. Just outside how far the Confederate full charge went. If it had been within the bonus move for charge for the Confederates, they'd be locked in melee in this range here. And locked in melee is where you count the number of figures, use that chart, you roll four dice each, and you double the casualties from the chart. So that's really bloody when they get into that. But because they move back on this one, on the second turn anyways, These guys would continue on all the way to here. Now both units, all the units in the charge would be in disorder in this case. Now remember the first turn, we had a failed, so it didn't matter. But in the second turn, it was successful. So that's how you do the charge. Now after the charge sequence is done, you have perform normal movement. So we're going to do that over here. Now in the woods, I consider it's only two inches for single line. So I'm going to move both the Confederate line and the Union line two inches. Sorry about the trees, it's sort of a mess. And my slippery slope of the nice terrain I have. So the union is going to be two inches, and then they're going to get the fire at each other. Now here's the important thing to remember about woods. They are approximately just over two inches. So both units are going to roll one die to see if they see each other in order to fire. So the union is going to roll first. They need a two or better to see each other. They, they see the Confederates. Now the Confederates are going to roll to see if they see the Union. And they both see each other. That's helpful because if they didn't, they would lose die for what's called area fire. But in this case, um, they are, like I said, I think they're just over two inches. Oh, I guess they're, I guess we're going to make them close range, so two. So here's a little complication for the sake of shooting. So because they move normally in normal range, anything of in normal range, four inches, you'd get three dice. However they move, so you lose a dice. But now they're back in close range, so they get four dice. Uh, three dice again, I'm sorry. And the same for the Confederates. If they had been over two inches, they would only get two dice each. So in this case, we're going to go back to the chart. 
you're going to see that uh, both are going to give you on the 20 column. Looking at the modifiers here below, it's going to be in woods, which is a minus 2 on the die roll. So I'm going to roll three dice for the union. They roll the 8, minus 2 is 6. So they're going to have one casualty on the union. And the Confederates are going to roll three dice. And they rolled well, 13. Minus 2 for the wood cover is 11. So they're going to get two casualties. I might have just misspoke of who did what, but. So they get two casualties. Now again, and they're doing the morale checks. If they have no stands missing, their normal morale is three. Minus one in the cover, so they need to both need snake eyes. Uh, two ones to pass morale. The Union did, and the Confederates did. And again, just for fun. If they had, had both had a stand loss, the morale for the Confederates would be 3, plus a stand loss of 3 is 6, minus 1 to which so they have to be to 5. They did. The Union, the same thing. Normal morale of 3, minus a stand of 3. So that's 6, minus 1 for covering the woods is a 5. they got to be a 5, and they did. So both of them pass, and there's the battle turn that happened for this turn. And that's a quick summary of this play. Sorry about the uh, tipping over the camera. But I hope that explains really quickly a quick turn and how easy it is to play in this game. Um, and you can have different results. Uh, remember the first charge failed? When I did it a second time, it was successful. And it was fun doing this, and I hope you enjoy this also.